All right. Let's talk about taboo things. Um, talking about things that make people uncomfortable is like my favorite. <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, I love talking about the things that are not polite conversation. Polite conversation bores the shit out of me, not gonna lie. It is mundane, bland, and boring. And the things that truly matter in life usually make you uncomfortable. Mm, why? Because they stir your feelings. They make you react. They unconsciously unlock things that you're like, oh shit, didn't know I was carrying that. Um, I don't know why I feel this way. Uh, I have a distaste or I'm triggered. And that is why we need to talk about the things that make us uncomfortable people. Ugh, so let it the fuck go. Uh, I feel like there's so much political correctness. There's so much watching your words and being mindful that not everyone is ready for that. That's fine. If someone's not ready for this conversation, I don't need to ha have this conversation with them. They don't need to listen. If you're not in resonance with what I'm talking about, bye. Like, I love y'all and I, I want to help open you guys up. I want to help make things that are normally uncomfortable more accessible and less daunting. Um, so one of my favorite things to talk about is sex because everyone does it. Everyone. There's the few that are asexual. There is that. Um, that's not, this is not for them, obviously. Uh, but I am very, very sex positive. I 100% think you should have a healthy sex life. Most, I feel like at least half of our population does not have a healthy sex life. You may be having sex. It doesn't mean it's a healthy sex life. Okay. So healthy sex. What is that? Well, it's yes. Uh, being mindful of STDs and making sure you're clean and, you know, getting tested, uh, especially if you're having multiple partners like that, uh, especially in this world of polyamory, please get tested. Please make sure you're asking your partners to get tested so that all your other partners are safe. But beyond that, beyond just the physical, medical, healthy version of sex, the healthiest version of sex is being conscious of what you're doing. Are you just having sex for validation? Are you just having sex to feel wanted? Are you having sex because you think that that's the only way to keep your partner? Are you having sex because you don't feel anything and sex makes you feel something? Where is it coming from? The drive to have sex, where is it coming from? I have goosebumps right now, so I hope some of you are actually checking in with yourself and saying, okay, I never really thought about why I have sex or my relationship to sex and the feelings around it is become so expected and or shamed. You're either expected to do it or you're shamed if you do or you don't. Um, so I really want you guys to reflect on yourself and say, do I enjoy sex? Is sex actually good for me? Do I, um, cause you know, more often than not, especially being identifying as a lesbian, most of my life, you always hear how straight women don't actually enjoy sex so much, or they're not getting what they need out of it. And I feel like that's why we need to have more conversations about sex. Let's talk about it. Okay. Let's open up. Let's stop being so, um, I feel like we're always walking on like ice. We're like afraid to crack the ice and whoa, but you know what? We need that fucking depth. Stop skimming the surface. Okay. Let's get deep about it. Why do you have sex? What is your relationship to sex? Do you have wounding around sex? Do you need to seek a therapist? Do you need to seek a Tantra teacher? Someone who can actually help you heal the energetic imprint on your womb, on your penis. Excuse me. If you're a male, it's fine. Both people carry dense, heavy, wounded energy in their sexual center, okay? It can be because of ex, it can be because of abuse in the past, it can be because of religion, it can be because of your belief system based on the society. Women feel they are obligated to give up their body because it's expected of them. Men feel obligated to perform in the bedroom and to be, you know, the main doer and mover of the whole experience. Um, women feel the need that they're, they have to be sexy in order to be wanted in a sexual way. These are all preconceived 
implanted ideas from the rest of the world, you know, that aren't actually healthy. So I really want you to reassess your relationship to sex. I really want you to do it for the right reasons, which is self-exploration, self-healing, open up the conversation with your lover. I don't like when you do this. I don't say anything because I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm tired of always walking on eggshells. I'm tired of skipping around it to just not hurt your feelings. But honestly, if we were both open and communicating about what we like and what we don't like, we would have a better experience overall and we would feel closer together. We would feel more in tune with each other, more connected in that experience, okay? Are you guys just fucking to have a good time? Are you just, I'm bored, life sucks, so let me get off. If you are, that's fine. If that's what you would prefer to do, that's great. But you'll never fully be satisfied with the sex because it's not satisfying you on a full integrated level, mind, body, and soul. It's just a physical get off, get the, you know, serotonin and the dopamine in your brain. Okay. Now, all of this talk about sex positive. I'm very sex positive. Please address your issues when it comes to sex. Please open up conversation. Let's not be afraid to talk about something every single human experiences at some point or another. Okay. I know there's lots of triggers around this, but if you're really triggered, you need the most healing. Okay. Stop running from your triggers. Your triggers are coming up for you to process and let go of. Okay. If you need help learning how to do this to heal your triggers and your wounds, let me know. I will hook you up with somebody. I have a wide network. Okay. Wide network of people who have been trained and who have made this a life work to help you unravel those dark, scary, pent up energy blocks, if you want to say, okay, I want to talk about why I'm celibate because I feel like sex positive, sex positive is beautiful and it's the pushed narrative. You know, it's like, yes, please let's get more familiar and open about sex, more authentic with me. I want not just the physical expression of sex. I want the full embodiment of everything, the conscious touch, the before you even touch genitals. Okay. The electricity, the tangible magnetism between you and the other person. That to me is better than the orgasm. That to me is ecstasy. Okay. So for me, if I don't have a partner, that I can have what you would call, some would call, making love with. If I can't completely drop all of my guards and have the most beautiful, authentic, open, and loving expression of sexual energy, I don't want any of it, okay? So, to me, celibacy is sacred. It is not just something who, for people who are religious, or a, way, a means of not having kids, you know, how this pushed in high school or elementary. I don't know when they start teaching that now. Um, but for me, it is a container. I'm containing my sexual energy because it's, to me, it's sacred and it's fucking beautiful. It's intense and it's powerful. I'm not just going to spill it for just a physical reaction. Like I said, I can give myself orgasms just fine. I don't need someone else to do that for me. So celibacy, I think is undervalued and it's not really understood for me. The moment when sex starts causing issues, the lack thereof, like, Ugh, I just need to have sex. I'm so fucking angsty and I'm frustrated and I'm horny and it's make, it's literally changing my energy to be aggressive and mean that I know I need to check in with myself and I need to soothe myself and I don't need to reach out and pull anybody else in to heal this because this is about me. It's not about somebody else. I'm not about to pull them in and get my life all messy, get their life all messy because I have things in me that I don't want to deal with or I don't want to um, acknowledge. So let's just get somebody else in here to give me that instant gratification and make me feel good. No, I am containing all this sexual energy. And I will tell you what, it gives me almost like a coffee rush, like to not constantly spill the sexual energy, right? It's like, I feel 
elevated. I feel like I'm looking from a higher perspective and I'm not so clingy and reaching grabby. Um, th those are not really great words, but you know what I mean? It's like grasping, desperate for that sexual energy and that sexual expression. So I feel like I've made the analogy that it's like when you have a dog that's really rowdy and wanting to bark and lunge and attack and, and jump on people, right? Instead of just letting my dog run wild and be all up in other people's business and cause drama per se, I will sit that dog down very quietly, sit it at my feet and keep it under control because my sex, our sex, your sex is currency, okay? It is life force. If you're just bleeding it out, giving it away for free, okay, it will drain you. Unless you have a partner who can pour into you to the same extent, okay? So that's why I'm gonna leave it. Keep it short, nice and sweet. Um, if any of this is interesting, awesome, message me, uh, comment, email me, uh, tactfullyunashamed at gmail.com. Um, also, Tactfully Unashamed on Facebook. So feel free to reach out. Feel free to give your own stories. I love triggering people into awareness. So hopefully this was good for you. If not, I'm so sorry, but maybe my channel's not for you. So uh, talk to you guys soon.